Hello everybody. Hello everybody and welcome back to I Was a Teenage Exocolonist. So this may or may not be our last episode. I'm not sure because we're at age 18 so we still have a whole nother year. But I don't know how much more we're going to see in this year. So this may be our last episode if I end up rushing through this year or skipping through this year because there's not much more content in the Geophonics Dome. Um, or if Cal does have some more surprises for us, I'd be happy about that. But, uh, either way, I'm gonna run through this year, and we'll see what we can do. And if we end up getting to the end, then we get to the end. And then we'll move on to Tammy, and she can live <laughs> from now on. Hey, who invited you guys, Cal said, stepping forward with his hands clenched. This is a private party. It's a public lounge, Vase replied. We can sit wherever we want. Cal stops right in the midst of the Helios. You guys think that just because you fell out of the sky, you're the wormhole's gift to Vertumna, he spits out. We don't need you. We never needed you. All you do is make things worse, like this party. You've rarely seen Cal so ready for a fight. He doesn't seem to care that the body language of the Helio kids has changed from cocky to dangerous. Y you're just a bunch of fascists, Cal continues. You and Lum. The lounge erupts, chairs screeching across the floor as the Helios jump to their feet yelling at Cal, calling the colony illegal and Cal a fugitive. They jostle him around, but Cal plants his feet and stands his ground. You hear a bottle breaking and see someone advancing on Cal. He's not backing down. STOP IT! Your voice is drowned out by their argument, then someone throws a punch and it's all chaos from there. Despite Cal's bravado and brawny physique, he's no fighter. One of the Helio kids socks him in the stomach and he goes down like a felled gnarl tree. Rex throws himself between Cal and his assailants, catching a few kicks on Cal's behalf before the Helios get tired and leave, with a few parting shots at Cal's alleged romantic interactions with float cows. Vase doesn't get involved, but he doesn't stop them either. He's the last to leave the lounge, staring hard at Rex before smirking and turning away. Rex helps Cal to his feet. First time, huh? He says, dusting off Cal's clothes. Don't worry, they probably got it out of their system. Good on you for sticking up for yourself. Nemi lingers at a distance, clearly angry at Cal, but feeling bad about the fight. Oh. <laughs> oh. Do you ever think about Tammy? Cal asks you, as you both lean back against the fence and watch the shadows creep across the garden path. He takes a long pull of his canteen and sighs. I don't know. I don't want to be a downer, man, but it's so sad, you know? It's been, what, seven years? He scrubs his hand through his hair. We're totally different people than we used to be. I wonder what kind of person she would have grown up to be. Someone very amazing, Cal. And you know what? I was going to promise that you'd experience it next time, and you kind of will, but she's mine. <laughs> but I love you right now. Mwah. Oh, tell her what you learned today. You've been so busy lately, the only way you're able to get all your work done is to multitask. Studying while you're eating, brushing your teeth in the shower, listening to hollow novels while you're about to fall asleep. You have to double up everything. You kind of expect your mom to tell you to take it easy, but she just laughs and claps you on the back. You're my kid, all right, she says. Just too damn much work, not enough hours in the day. I know how you feel. <laughs> Luckily, I am in a constant wormhole, so I always have time to do stuff because I can never die for real. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Cal beams. Yeah, of course. I can always make time for you. You grab a bite to eat. Cal stretches and rubs his stomach. I'm famished, he says. Let's go grab some chow, yeah? You and Cal trek over to the cafeteria where Cal loads his tray with enough to feed at least two of him. I'm a growing boy, he says, indicating his plate. Working outside takes a lot out of you. You spend an enjoyable lunch hour reconnecting with Cal, who's more than happy to tell you about everything from crop rotation to who's kissing whom on the garden crew. It's nice. I know who's kissing you on the garden crew. Hang out with the Stratos. No, I totally get it, Rex says to Cal as you approach. They didn't used to be this mean. Sure, we all joked about how, like, we'd find you guys rubbing sticks together in the dirt after your nanotech broke down, but it wasn't like this. He jerks his thumb towards Vase and his group of friends, who've wrangled themselves a live trippet and are skewering it to roast over a bonfire. You can hear its dying squeals from here and, as night falls, the smell of sweet charred scent of it cooking. No, they've always kind of been like this. Nomi shakes their head. Just like total human supremacists. See something you don't understand? Nomi makes laser guns with their fingers. Pew pew, all gone. Want something else someone else has? Pew pew, all yours. They lean back on their hands and look up at the night sky. In dust, the wormhole looks so peaceful and far away. I used to think me and Rex were like changelings, like aliens beamed in and replaced two human babies with weirdos. I don't think you're weird, Cal says, eyes wide. I think it's really great you two don't act like Helios. 
We are Helios, though, Rex replies, and Nomi nods. And some people dancing around that bonfire are Stratos. It's not about how you're raised. It's about the choices you make, Nomi finishes. No one is just a good person or a bad person. Only bad people think they always make the right choices. The dancing and feasting continues well into the night, while you pass the time with your friends in the peaceful faction. Knowing that the whole colony isn't into being soldiers and fighting Lum's war on nature makes you feel less alone. But you can't stop thinking about the governor's eyes as he crushed Utopia's hand today. As long as he's in charge, does it matter when anyone else wants? The week after Virtum Nali is one of the hottest since you've landed. You're supposed to take time off for a much-needed break, but it's just so humid and awful, and tempers are short. Shortly after the festival, you start seeing graffiti cropping up everywhere. It seems that a lively, if not particularly civil, conversation between two factions is being held on the flat surfaces of the colony. Lum announces a zero-tolerance policy for political graffiti, but you notice that not every tag is being removed. Just the ones against the war, of course. Ugh. It begins... Hey Mars, you want to start a coup? I'll bribe this punk first. Instance is convinced -ence. Why have I never used that before? That's so good. Oh, whoa! If you're on lookout while Dees is planning the bomb, you can find him. Spying on a friend. Oh, well, perfect, because I need to convince him anyway, and I almost kind of forgot about that. What are you doing? I must reason with you. Please don't do this. Alright, that's fixed. <laughs> now I have to convince you. I'm convincing two stubborn punks in one go. Oh? You're getting ready to leave your quarters one day when you're stopped by your mom, who hasn't left for work yet. She's always been an early riser, out into the fields before first sunrise. That she specifically stayed home to talk to you is a bad sign. Sit down, Yabby, she says. We have to talk. Okay. You sit down across from your mother. She stares you down, just looking, right into your soul, like she's counting up every bad thing you've ever done. I don't think you appreciate how much I know about you, she says finally. With the amount of freedom you kids have, you forget that you're being watched. I don't like what I'm seeing. And your attitude, she spits, is absolutely atrocious. I know you're a teenager and you're supposed to push boundaries, but this is ridiculous. You're ridiculous. What are you talking about? What's going on? What did I do? I would no you're 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 ridiculous. She bangs her fist on the table for emphasis. This isn't a hollow vid about high school drama, Yabby. This is real life. This is life or death. Yeah, and you've died many times. I have lived just fine without you. Do you get what I'm saying? We're the only humans here. If we don't fight for our survival with everything we have, there won't be another colony ship falling out of the sky to save us. Is this about Sim? You have to learn how to fit in, she says quieter. You're a part of a larger community, an ecosystem. You're supposed to be learning that, but you're running out of time. Soon you'll be an adult. People will need to rely on you. I just don't understand where this argument is coming from. You're putting too much pressure on me. Am I? Your mom says, tilting her head. Her gaze goes somber and distant. When I was just a little older than you are now, I was fighting a war against the people of Earth. First they ignored us, then they mocked us, then they attacked us. She pr pats her prosthetic leg, and then we won. All so we could give you the chance to grow up here. Don't disrespect me by wasting it. Your mom reaches out and pats your head patronizingly. I remember being your age, full of anger, ready to fight anyone who told me what to do. I wish someone had told me that I deserved better. I wish... She shakes her head. You can do better than this, Yabby, she says solemnly. You have to apply yourself and listen to your elders. This colony needs you to be a part of it. That's why you were born. Oh, is it because my rebellion is high? For a literal rebel fighter, your mom has a strange relationship to authority. You'd think she would understand what it means to want freedom above all else. She's such a hypocrite. You're sick of people telling you what to do, thinking they know what's best for you. They don't know what it's like to grow up on an alien planet. They don't know what it's like to have all these weird thoughts and dreams. They don't. Life is different here on Earth than it was on- Life is different on Earth than it was on Vertumna. Her experiences do not mean I have to experience the same pressures and struggles and troubles. Life is different here. That's just so, like, so aggressive. <laughs> Ironically enough, now she's the only one I have to talk to left about the vote, and we have never talked to her when she's been in charge. Find some time alone with the chief cultivator to talk about your plan to peacefully depose Lum. Oh god, here we go. 
Talk to your mom about it. Your mom is a busy woman. Probably the busiest in the colony, honestly. So you keep it brief. You explain the details of Mars's plan. Depose Lum, get voted in, save the colony, and maybe the planet. Ugh, I hate all this bureaucracy stuff, she groans when you're done. Say what you want about the new guy. At least he doesn't waste my time with pointless meetings. This isn't a pointless meeting. No, you're right, she says. This is important stuff. You're right to care about it. Oh, so now I'm right to rebel. But I wasn't right to rebel about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> she leans her back in her chair and puts her feet on her desk, leaking her hands over her stomach. It's just... You're so young. Oh, but I'm mom! I thought I was going to be an adult soon! She continues. You and Marzipan. Do you really think either of you can lead this entire colony? Well, apparently, when you were a little older than me, you were fighting a fucking war. So I guess it's okay if I run a fucking country. This isn't some hobby farm or secret club. This is the fate of human civilization on a hostile planet. Are you really prepared to make for the tough decisions you'll have to make as governor? Of course I am! Fuck you! Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. <laughs> I just feel so sassy with her right now, getting called out for no reason. And then now she's like, are you really ready? Are you sure you're ready? And 20 minutes ago she was like, you're gonna be an adult soon, you need to act like it. Err! <laughs> I win! Support me! Your mom smiles. One you haven't seen in some time. Look at you, she says fondly, all grown up and overthrowing the government just like your old lady. Oh, now I'm an adult. It'd be hypocritical of me to, of me to tell you that you're too young. Oh, really? Would it? Would it be? <laughs> she continues and pats her leg. I was about your age when I lost this, fighting on Earth for what I believed in. I didn't listen to my elders either, but apparently I have to. If I hadn't done the same thing you're doing right now, probably would have had a place on the strata with your father. Wouldn't have had it with you. So, who knows what you're capable of, and where it'll take you. If you truly believe you're ready, you'll have my support. Alright! And just in time for this! I am not going outside! Hmm. Let's keep going. Alright, here we go. So from now on, we're going to be looking at the endings we can get, because we've all seen the convincing scene before. I've played through it several times, so I'm just going to skip past it to, it to when I uh, inevitably win it, and then we will see what ha- well, oh. I, I, <laughs> I will just skip ahead to when we will inevitably win, and then we can uh, see all of the endings we can get. Ah, fuck it. Oh wait, oh no, I didn't finish the- oh no! Hang on, I gotta go back! Alright, here we go. Our first ending. Ooh! That's our mom's thing! Farmer! Oh, look how cool we look! Oh, I love the short hair! What the colony really needs are solid, dependable homesteaders like yourself, plowing the fields and gathering the harvest. Real salt of the earth types, or whatever you call it when you aren't on earth. Life is simple, but your work is critical in providing for the colony and preparing the land for future generations. You work under Cal, who is a better boss than he wants to admit. A homesteader like you, he understands the importance of land stewardship too. You make it your life work to turn this corner of Rotuna into a place where your children can thrive. You plant dizzy weed in the corn? Your pact with the gardeners means you don't need to farm for basic sustenance. They seed the area around your colony with food-bearing plants and teach you how to forage more effectively than ever, taking the pressure off geophonics to produce your entire diet. Hobby farms flourish in geophonics as well as hybrid experiments. Your personal farm is filled with flowers and beloved crops from Earth, just like your mom dreamed. And between the rows of corn, you plant a few native species, just for fun. What about Cal? Your boyfriend Cal grew up, but he never lost his boyish charm. Thanks to the gardeners enticing nearby plants to grow heavy with fruits and nuts for the colony, Cal gets to do what he loves, getting dirty and growing things for fun. He never has to deal with the burden of providing for the colony as your parents did. The planet provides everything you need. Not every relationship that begins in your teenage years is fit to last, but with Cal, it just works. Cal is a natural father. 
Together you have a tidy little sum of children, and that's the only tidy thing about them. Your children grow up digging in the dirt, eating bugs, nearly getting mauled by farm equipment, and having a great time being kids. Socks just keeps getting bigger, and it seems she might live to be a hundred years old. With the colony at peace, Cal is able to convince Rhett to release Socks into the wild. After a tearful goodbye, you're there with Cal to see her off into her forever home, where she belongs. Cal himself becomes an example for the other colonists, becoming somewhat of a spiritual leader for those who accept their role under the gardeners. He lives a long and happy life, ages peacefully, and outlives you. We've seen these before. get to see their pioneer dreams come true. With the forest bursting with food, they're both able to lay down the burden of feeding the entire colony. They still work in geophonics, but recreationally. Your dad is cultivating dizzy weed and hops, your mom working on her personal garden of earth plants. Now that the gardeners are keeping an eye on the colony too, her earth plants flourish without threatening to take over the local fauna. They both live long, happy lives, and you eventually return them both to the soil they loved so much. They'll always be with you, in the ground you walk on, in the trees that give you shade, and in the cycle of life that sustains you. Aw, I like the farmer ending. And I love Cal too, I'm glad everyone gets to be happy. I love the idea of me and Cal having like, you know, just like this group of little maniac children who are just always messy and dirty and enjoying the farm. That sounds so sweet. Just having a peaceful childhood, something that our our kids and our, probably our parents didn't get. Like us as kids, not our kids. Our kids get a good life. Next ending. Oh! Your dad has an interesting sample he wants you to study today. So kiddo, I've been cultivating something, he says. He shows you a plant with a thick purple stalks and a pair of tiny heart-shaped leaves. It's called dizzyweed. We used to have something like it back on Earth. Oh, I wonder what it is, he continues. It makes you feel relaxed and silly, kind of like blep tea, but without the buzz. We're gonna study it together. He looks at the sample. Pretty sure we could find a medicinal use for it. <laughs> you have drugs? No, wait, I thought this was Cal's. Your dad laughs. Where do you think I got the term dizzy weed from? He and I are in cahoots. Did you guys try it? No. <laughs> Your dad chuckles. Well, you can if you want. It's safe even for teens. Well, just don't go too overboard with it, or you might end up like your old man. He curls his hands up like he's doing a scary impression of a monster. Doing what you love on an alien planet with a great kid. Aww. Oh, ask your dad how to use it. You correctly assume your dad would be cool with you getting some hands-on experience with Dizzyweed. He explains how to chew the stem to ingest the funky tasting juices and warns you to spit them out after or else it'll make you feel queasy. You do as he says, and within a few minutes you feel a head brush that makes you so dizzy you need to lay your head down on the research bench. Hence the name, you guess. Your dad chuckles and rubs your back. Don't worry, this part is over fast, he says soothingly. You relax and let the dizzy weed take you wherever it's gonna go. The dizziness does wear off within a few minutes, leaving you pleasantly... floaty? Wow. Yeah, this is nice. Like everything is just a little softer, radiating gentle patterns when you turn your head. Your dad likes to chatter as he works, and you find yourself giggling at him more often. He's so funny, and so nice. It's really cool that he's so cool with showing you this. You have a cool dad. Cool. After a while, the high wears off, and you feel a little more corporeal. While you were circumnavigating the wormhole, Congruence helpfully crunched a few numbers and provides you with a report on the plant's chemical composition. What do you think? Does it have medicinal properties? It says so right here. Congruence's report indicates that dizzy weed is more than just a fun diversion with some pain-killing properties. At a high enough concentration, it can actually fight off bacterial infection. Neat! Your dad is proud of your work in the field of pharmaceutical science. He floats you a few kudos and warns you definitely not to ingest the concentrate. I will remember. Botanist. I like that one. I love all of her clothes, the different clothing too. Like, I, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I love how each like end card isn't just like a different picture of like the environment. It's like they drew out an entire environment and new outfits for each one. It looks really cool. 
There's no end of species to discover on Vertumna. In your lifetime, you discover over 13,000 different species of flora and fauna, some that transcend that distinction too. You give them silly names. Snack Sniffer and Wonder Fungus, Double Scrundle, Grand Mutter, Gully Waiter, and the Tasseled Lumpkin. You discovered them, so you get to name them. Future generations will just have to deal with it. You want- we work under Cal, who's a better boss than he wants to admit. He doesn't mind when you disappear for a month to go tromping about in search of some new variation of fungus. Oh! Cal and Sim get along like kudzu vines, or a sponge cake infestation, so enthusiastically that it threatens to overtake the whole room. Cal thinks Sim is just the coolest and teases you relentlessly for not telling him about your alien friend when you were kids. Sometimes you think Sim likes Cal even more than you do. Sim is enthralled with the idea of children. Smaller and even less predictable humans? What's not to love? Your children love their weird alien uncle. Oh, that's so cool! Alright, we've got one more. Oh, look at that! That's so cool! Xeno Whisperer! The Manticore and the Unicorn! The Unihorse and the little hop off! They're so little! You can tame any rampaging beast and tell what an animal is feeling just by laying a hand on it. People come to regard your incredible animal empathy almost like a mystical ability, making you a highly esteemed member of Geophonics. You adopt a menagerie. There's no animal hoarding laws on Vertumna, yet. You eventually have so many animals you have to move into a converted barn out near Geophonics so the smell doesn't bother the other colonists. You think they're a little scared of you, but they might just be jealous. Or maybe they're scared of your pet manticore. He's a scraggly old thing, you tell them. Don't mind murder scythes, he'll try to bite you, sure. But his teeth have half fallen out and his pincers are dull. He's just a harmless, sweet rescue angel who couldn't hurt a fly, even if he really, really wanted to. Manticore live a long time with proper care, turns out, and he's your companion well into your twilight years. Aww. Alright, well we have reached another bundle of endings and we have finished Cal's storyline and romance. Talk about a good way to end it. I really loved all the endings in that run. I think this has been one of my favorite runs so far because as much as I love Cal and Sim, or well, as much as I love Decent Sim, I also love Cal because not only do you get so close with him and he's just a sweet harvard of a dude, he just has so much love for everyone, but also in this run we got to spend time with our parents and spend a lot of time with them. Even if I did get sassy with the mom at the end, it was sweet to have them there and interesting to see how they change things, even if it was only a little. Um, so next time we're going to be working on Tammy. Tammy will be our next run, so she will live, and I will not murder her this run. Well, technically it wasn't murder, even though I could have totally stopped it. Eh, who cares about it? Semantics. Well, she'll be here anyway. Um, and I am looking forward to that as well, because I have done a little bit of babysitting in the crush, but I haven't really explored that area at all, so I'm excited to see what we can do there. But until then, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing. Remember to take care of yourself, pet your pet manticore, and have a good day.